Now, in today's lesson, we are going to learn how to write chromatic intervals, okay? And we are going to learn how to write chromatic intervals by taking the minor intervals, the perfect intervals, and the major intervals we learned in level 5, and increasing and reducing their size, okay? So, let's start with the definition of a chromatic interval. A chromatic interval is two notes that do not naturally occur in the key signatures we've learned, okay? So let's say maybe C to E sharp. There is no E sharp in the key signature of C major, obviously, so that would be a chromatic interval. The next new word we need to learn before we start is the word augmented, okay? An augmented interval occurs when you increase the size of a major interval by one semitone, or you increase the size of a perfect interval by one semitone. You can think of it as really big. And the last word we need to learn before we start is diminished, okay? A diminished interval occurs when you shrink a perfect interval by one semitone, or you shrink a minor interval by one semitone, and you end up with diminished. You can think of the word as meaning really small, okay? So we're going to, I'm going to do this in three steps. First, I'm going to, going to show you how to expand major intervals into augmented intervals. Then I'm going to show you how to shrink minor intervals into diminished intervals. And then I'm going to show you how to take perfect intervals and put them either as augmented or shrink them down to diminish because they go both ways. Let's start with augmented intervals. Let's learn how to write an augmented interval. You need to start with any major interval. Let's take this major sixth in the key of F major. F to D is a major sixth. I know that because D is the sixth note of an F major scale and it exists within the key signature. Now let's say I want to increase this interval, increase its size and transform it into an augmented interval. Now there's two ways I can do this. I have my two notes. I can either raise the top note by one semitone and increase the distance, or I can lower the bottom note by one semitone and increase the distance that way. If you have a choice, it's up to you. Sometimes the textbook will specify, change the top note or change the bottom note, do whatever. But there's, there's really two options. So let's do both. Here's a major sixth. If I was in my textbook right now and I was writing this down, I would see the note D. I could add a sharp beside this note D and that would raise it to D sharp. I've increased the distance and now this is no longer a major sixth, this is an augmented sixth. Major sixth, augmented sixth. Major sixth, now let's make it an augmented sixth by lowering this F. So I would write a flat in this case and lower the F by one semitone to F flat. So this is a major sixth, lower it by one semitone, the bottom note. Now this is also an augmented sixth. So F to D sharp was an augmented sixth and F flat to D natural was also an augmented sixth. So we took a major interval, increased its size, and created an, uh, created an augmented interval. Let's do one more. Let's expand a major third. Uh, a flat major. This is a major third. I know that because C is the third note of an A flat major scale. Let's transform this into an augmented third. Let's raise the top note by one semitone. So I would write a sharp beside the C natural on my page and it would get bumped up here to C sharp. And A flat to C sharp would be an augmented third. Major third, get bigger, augmented third. Now, instead of changing the top note, let's, uh, let's uh, lower the bottom note. So this would be A flat in my book. Oh look, we're going to have to use a double flat. 
So in order to lower a note that's already flat, we would write a double flat. So in this case, it would be A double flat to C would be an augmented third. So here's a major third. Lower the bottom note to A double flat. You increase its size by one semitone. And now it's an augmented third. I told you you would need double flats. Next, let's reduce minor intervals and crunch them down and create diminished intervals. Let's start with a minor sixth, okay? I'll jump to the key of C major. Here's a C. A is the sixth note of a C major scale, so that's a major interval. I want a minor interval, so I'll decrease that by one semitone. There it is. There's a minor sixth. Now, I want to make that even smaller. There's two options. I can lower the top note by one semitone and decrease its size, or I can raise the bottom note by one semitone and decrease its size. Let's start by lowering the top note by one semitone. Minor sixth. Now here's A, here's A flat. I, want, I need to reduce A flat again. So, oh look, I, I'm doing the same thing. I need to use A double flat. So C to A double flat is a diminished sixth. C to A is a major sixth. C to A flat is a minor sixth. C to A double flat is a diminished sixth. Now let's do the same thing. Let's transform it into a diminished sixth, but we will raise the bottom note. So we'll in, uh, we will use a sharp to raise the bottom note and decrease the size that way. So we start out with C and A flat again, that's our minor sixth. Now if I add a sharp to the C, we get C sharp to A flat. And on the page, that will very clearly look like a diminished sixth. Let's take a minor third. Now let's do something else. Let's take a minor seventh and reduce it to a diminished seventh, okay? How about we go from G, a minor seventh above G is F natural. Here's a minor seventh. Now let's reduce its size by, we'll decrease, uh, we'll flatten the, we'll lower the top note first. So we get G to F, that's a minor seventh. Now if on my page I write F flat, this gets bumped down to here. This is a diminished seventh. G to F sharp is a major seventh. G to F natural is smaller than that, so it's a minor seventh. And G to F double flat is a diminished seventh because it's even smaller than the minor. Let's start again and we'll change this note down here to create the diminished interval. So we're starting with a minor interval again. And now we can raise the bottom note up one semitone to make it even smaller than a minor to G sharp. G sharp to F natural is a diminished seventh. Okay, so we've done two things so far. We've taken major intervals, made them bigger into augmented intervals, and we've taken minor intervals and crushed them, made them smaller into diminished intervals. Now let's talk about perfect intervals. Perfect intervals can get bigger and become immediately augmented, or they can get smaller and become immediately diminished, okay? This is not the case for major or minor intervals. The biggest, uh, you start with a major interval, if you shrink it, it becomes minor. It doesn't go to diminished. It has to go through the minor process first and then become diminished. And if you take a major interval, if you take a minor interval and it wants to become augmented, you gotta go through the major interval first. Perfect intervals are perfect and they go straight to augmented or straight to diminished. There is no such thing as a major fifth and there is no such thing as a minor fourth. Remember, it's perfect fifth, it gets bigger, it's augmented fifth. Perfect fifth, it gets smaller, it's diminished fifth. Let's do that on the piano now. Uh, e to B is a perfect fifth. I know that because B is the fifth note of an E major scale. 
let's transform it into an augmented fifth. Let's sharpen this B and raise it by one semitone, B sharp. E to B sharp is an augmented fifth. Okay, go back. Let's transform it into an augmented fifth by changing the bottom note. Perfect fifth to start. Now, if we lower the E by one semitone and we write E flat, this is also an augmented fifth because it's bigger than a perfect fifth. Now let's make it diminished. Start with a perfect fifth. Now we're going to shrink it. Let's reduce its size by one semitone by lowering this top note and we would play B flat instead. It's a diminished fifth. Devil's interval. Go back to perfect fifth. Let's make it diminish by changing this note. We'll raise it and we'll write E sharp instead. Another demonic interval. Diminished fifth. So perfect fifth. Augmented fifth. Augmented fifth. Perfect fifth. Diminished fifth. Diminished fifth. That's a lot of labels. I'm tired. That's it. That's the level six interval lesson. So let's go over to the whiteboard. Now you might have noticed, let's pause. Actually, I have time to do this now. You might have noticed on the camera that the intervals look really weird on the piano. Here's a major fifth, or sorry, here's a major third. If we increase its size by one semitone, make it an augmented third, it's an augmented third, but that also looks like a perfect fourth. F to B flat is a perfect fourth, but F to A sharp is an augmented third, but they're the same thing on the piano. Yes, they're the same thing on the piano, but when we get to the whiteboard and you're writing them down, they will not look the same because F to B flat on the page is bigger than F to A sharp, okay? So even if you got kind of distracted during this lesson, we're like, isn't that minor seventh, isn't that diminished seventh a sixth? It will all make sense when we go to the whiteboard. Let's go there now and make sense of the world.